Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and to a new episode of the Montreal Canadiens franchise mode in NHL 20. Uh, now in the previous episode, it was a complete heartbreaker. As you guys can see here, we lost in the Stanley Cup final versus the Anaheim Ducks. Uh, not only did we lose in the finals, we blew a 3-1 series lead. We lost game number 5 after being up 3-1, 6-4. Game number 6, 2-1. And game number 7, 4-1. Now, if that's not bad enough, our AHL team, the Laval Rocket, blew a 3-0 series lead against the Texas Stars. They were up 3-0 in the final series and then lost the next four games in a row. Just complete heartbreak on both sides, uh, NHL and AHL. Now, I do want to mention that Joe Thornton is now finally a Stanley Cup champion. Uh, we actually traded away Joe Thornton to the Anaheim Ducks for Sam Steele. So I, I guess that's the only positive is that Thornton finally gets his cup. Uh, the Ducks beat us in 7. They beat the Blackhawks in 7. The Sharks in 6. And the Coyotes in 6. We beat the Sabres in 5. The Lightning in 6. And we swept the Hurricanes in the conference final. Unfortunately for us, we did fall short. So in this episode, we're going to go through the NHL offseason. Uh, we're going to go through the draft as well as free agency in a re-sign phase. And then the following episode will be the 2021-2022 season. Now here's a look at the draft lottery. The Minnesota Wild have won the draft lottery. They went from 7-1. New York Rangers via Winnipeg 4-2 and 5-3. The New York Rangers are picking 2-3 and three in the draft. Ottawa moves up from 1-4. to four, LA from 2-5. to five, Columbus from 3-6. to six. So... Wow, crazy movement. I mean, the Rangers have two of the top three and three in the top 13. That's insane. The Rangers are going to get much, much better for sure after this draft. Uh, looking at retired players quickly. Say, look who retired. So, Patrick Marlowe there. 1,200 points, 1,800 games. Ending out with 590 goals. Retires as a member, as, retires as a member of the Detroit Red Wings. Ryan Kessler there. Uh, as a member of the Ducks in their AHL team, just over a thousand games. Martin Hansel, Trevor Daly, there, Richardson, Moore Boyle. Getting down the list, Steve Bernier, former Moncton Wildcat, my hometown team, and I actually met him in person. Uh, looking down the list, this is the rest of the retired players. As for goaltending, I don't believe we had any goalies last year that retired. So Curtis Michelini, Victor Foss, and then. A couple of other guys have retired. That's all for retirees this year. First off, let's take a look at the draft class. Uh, we are going to be picking very late in the draft, having lost in the Stanley Cup Finals. So uh, the first four guys are actually unknown. More than likely, they're going to be elite. Looks like the first five guys there. Aturati, uh, he had 13 points in 51 games at 18 in the Liga. Joachim Imanin there had 24 points in 57 games at 18. Uh, Andre Butsayev out of Russia, and then Tom Arson, defenseman out of the Liga. Then Trevor Wong had a fantastic year at 18 in the WHL, 115 points, 46 goals. What a year for Trevor Wong. Then Cole Sillinger had a pretty good year with the Medicine Hat Tigers. Uh, center man, he had 92 points. And then Zachary Lere, I would love to get this guy. He's a rookie for the Wildcats. Uh, in real life, he's only 16. I'm going to put his stats on the screen. He has a fantastic year. He's very good offensively. I see him go in fights. He's a tough guy. I mean, for 5'10", 201. Uh, so in-game with the Wildcats, he would have registered 78 points in 67 games. Uh, his total of points is 45 points in 64 games for this year, which he's having a much better year than... He's actually having a better year in real life. So there you go. Zachary Lerio of the Wildcats. Then you got uh, Joshua Roy of the QMJHL. St. John Sea Dogs, one of Moncton's rivals. 71 points in 68 games. The center. A lot of these guys having very, very good uh, point totals. Carson Lambos. He was uh, amazing for me in my Atlantic Navigators franchise mode. If you guys seen that, you remember Carson Lambos. He grew to be, I believe it was like almost 90 overall as a defenseman. Uh, so honestly, pretty uh, pretty deep draft so far in the first round. I mean, look at these guys. 85 points and this guy, uh, Kidney, 
also playing in the QMJHL. Wow, so I think there's going to be a lot of pretty good players uh, in this draft. I'm going to take a look now at the uh, potential, see if there's any late draft steals. Uh, apart from Trevor Wong, does it look like there's any guarantees there? I'm going to take a look quickly if there's any gems. This guy, Dallas Banks. Our scouts recommend him. Had a decent year there in USA. Uh, could be Ely, so I'm going to pin him just in case. when I take a look at him in a few rounds. I'm going to take a look if there's any gems in the draft. And no, but there's two busts, so we'll definitely have to keep away from them. So we are picking 38 at the moment. I uh, wonder if we could potentially get a top 5 pick. Maybe uh, trade away a uh, prospect that is not very good. See if what we have. Uh, just for fun, I'm going to just go ahead and look at the assets we have. I'm curious to see if we could potentially move up in the draft. So obviously Caulfield, KK, Romanov. They're staying with the team. Domi up to an 87 overall. Let's go. All these guys are going up, which is great to see. Weber is still an 89. Sam Steele went up from an 82 to an 84. Thank you very much, Anaheim. Look at that. What a beauty. Dunois, 85. Suzuki, 80. Uh, I'm going to take a look at Paling, 79 there. Kreider went up one overall to 83, which is great to see. Taking a look at Price. This is the moment we've got to see if he went down or up. 87 overall. Wow, that's pretty tough. He had a very, very good playoff. It's unfortunate he has less value than would have had uh, earlier there in the franchise mode. So that definitely sucks. We might have to look into the future, see what we need to do for uh, to get maybe a new goalie. We'll have to take a look at that. I'm going to try this trade here with the... Columbus Blue Jackets. I'm going to try to get six overall to get Zachary Lurie. High top six. He could definitely be very good for our team. Uh, I'm going to try to give them away uh, Tim Studzel, which he, like I mentioned, only 69 overall. Try to give Zion Nybeck 63 overall. I'm going to try to get two firsts. First for this year and the first for next year as well. As they actually don't take Trevor Wong. Oh, this could be actually pretty sick for us if we can get Trevor Wong. All right, I'm going to try it again, guys. I'm going to give away, again, Tim Studzel. I'm going to give Zion Nybeck just to add to the value as they actually want him. 63 overall at 19. Uh, trade value is way on our side. I'm going to try to be greedy and go from there. I'm going to try to get two first. So we're basically trading away Tim Studzel for Trevor Wong and Zion Nybeck for a first-round pick. Let's see if this is going to go through. Trade accepted. Let's go. So we're going to be picking fifth overall in the 2021 NHL entry draft. Let's look at the top five. Uh, it's going to be picking sixth overall in the NHL 2021 entry draft. So they picked Aturati number one. 76 overall high elite. Iman in 82 overall. Six overall more medium elite. Busayev 79 medium elite. So a couple of forwards there. Left wing, left wing center. Arsen uh, or RC, not sure how to pronounce that. Defenseman 78 overall medium elite. Sillinger 73 overall high top six. So we're definitely going to go for the big fish there. Trevor Wong, centerman, 46 goals, 69 nice assists. Firstly, the Montreal Canadiens would definitely want to congratulate. The Anaheim Ducks on winning the Stanley Cup after a hard-fought battle. Uh, they were a great opponent. And at the end of the day, congrats to Anaheim. They're going to go celebrate in the California sun. The Montreal Canadiens are extremely proud to select out of the Kelowna Rockets in the WHL. Trevor Wong, medium elite. Let's look at his rating. He is 76 overall medium elite. He is 7 overalls higher than Tim Studzel, so it's already a huge improvement. And apart from that, we get an extra first for next year. Awesome to see. All right, so after that big trade, I'm definitely just going to sim up to my pick. I don't think I need to do another big trade. So Philadelphia takes Zachary Lerdu, 72 overall high top six. What goes to the Capitals high top six, Penelli meeting top six. I don't think there's going to be any more at least. Oh, there is. Okay, there you go. Carson Lambos, of course. He was fantastic for me in the Atlantic Navigators franchise mode. 
Now he's going to the Boston Bruins. Montreal's rival. He's going to be one of my rivals moving in the future. Chaika, medium top four goes to the Devils. Uh, looking at the rest of the picks, it doesn't look like there's any other elites there. So we're going to be... Oh, there is Hutanen, 62 overall, medium elite defenseman to the Toronto Maple Leafs, 24th overall. That's a steal from Toronto right there. Zach Stringer here, uh, 18 years old, left winger for WHL Ledbridge Hurricanes. Uh, Zach Stringer had a pretty good year. He had 63 points in 68 games for Ledbridge, so we're going to take him out of the Ledbridge Hurricanes and the WHL Zach Stringer. 68 overall, medium top six, so definitely not a bad pick right there. I'm probably going to take the goaltender in the um, next round. That could be elite. All right, so I'm going to take Marcus Sansonov, a goaltender already 19 out of Russia. Uh, he had pretty good stats there, 13 and 7 and 1. 90 save percentage, 275 goals against in five shutouts. Marcus Samsonov, hopefully he's a good rating. And it looks like he's high elite, 58 overall. That's a huge pickup right there. A steal in the second round, a high elite goaltender. Wow, I was not expecting that. So we have back almost back-to-back -back picks here in the third round. Trevor Wong, a high elite goaltender. I will not complain. This is turning out to be a pretty sick draft so far. So I'm going to take Dallas Banks here. Scout to go 124. I just want to avoid anyone taking him. 19-year-old uh, goaltender. 34-23. Six shutouts. 9 taste save percentage. And a 286 goals against. If we draft back-to-back -back elite goaltenders, that would be unreal. Dallas Banks. He is medium elite. We drafted back-to-back -back medium elite. Or high elite goaltenders. Wow, this is pr one of the best drafts I've ever did. This is unreal. Start with this guy here, Matthias Fast. Could be medium elite. A right winger out of... Right winger, he's 50 overall, low top six. So I knew our luck was going to run out at some point. We have back-to-back -back picks in the fourth round. This is turning out to be a pretty awesome draft. But after this... Really not a lot more. A lot of HL potential guys. Daryl Moy or Mui. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. But it could be a low elite. Take a chance here. Nothing to lose. Medium bottom 653 overall. Alright. I think we need some defensemen here. I'm going to take Amari Beach. 18 years old. 6'4", 213 at 18. Could be a medium top 4 potential. Hopefully he's a good pick. We're going to have to go way back. We almost have 3 straight picks here. So he is medium top six, so not bad. He's an enforcer, so he's a big, strong guy. We actually have three straight picks. Before last in the fourth round, the last pick of the fourth round, and the first pick of the fifth round, and then two picks after. Oh my gosh, we have four picks out of five, in five spots. Man, we're just stacking up. We're just stocking up on prospects. We're going to be either with our team or going to be trade bait. A burnt supis. Out of the Fishtown Penguins, Brimmer Haven, Dell. Try saying that three times fast. My goodness. All right. He's a German. So we're going to take him. Burnt Supis. Burnt Supis. It's probably not like that you pronounce it. And I do apologize if there's any Germans tuning in. I am Canadian. I'm not good with some of those European pronunciations. Let's look at pick number 127 here. What a crazy drive this is turning out to be. Uh, I'm going to go with Peyton Fitzpatrick. It looks like he had a good year. Guaranteed low top nine. Could be in our AHL team eventually. 61 overall. All right, we're in our fifth round here. And this guy has such a cool name that I think I need to take him. Robbie from Delorme. That's pretty cool to say. Look at that. Out of the WHL Portland Winterhawks. Right winger. He is 56 overall. AHL medium top six. All right, so let's check out what's available. This guy could be a medium top six. Victor Goldabin, 19 years old, defenseman out of Russia. Let's take a chance at him, see what his rating is. 54 overall, 7D, so not a great pick. Uh, we're up to the seventh round. You probably only have one or two picks left. This guy, guaranteed medium bottom six. Yaher, burned Yaher. So we have a second guy, that first name. Out of Germany. His name sounds like Jager. I can't not take him. 53 overall, medium bottom six. So that's going to be it for the NHL entry draft. 
very very happy we get trevor wong we get a gear we get we get trevor wong we get a high elite goaltender a medium elite goaltender i mean that was just awesome looking good for the future in montreal the only downside is carry price went down to an 87 overall so he went down by four so that's pretty unfortunate hopefully he'll be able to still be good this year if it comes to the point where it's getting rough we have a lot of assets we could potentially trade for another goaltender it's younger now free agencies this is looking good so we actually have 31 million in cap space we're gonna have to sign a few of these contracts looking at centerman first kk what's he gonna want 89 overall at 20 years old 6.4 million for one year he wants to prove himself i wonder if i give him like a long contract will he take i'm gonna try to sign him long term so sam Steele, he needs to come back 4.3 that's fantastic dino 5.3 look at that our center situation is already pretty good we're going to be able to sign all of those guys without problem two now wants 5.8 there you go uh we have Kreider and Drouin locked up already brendan gallagher is not going anywhere he wants 5.8 i mean the highest contract so far is 6 million which is awesome caulfield is on his entry level deal <coughs> 3.4 for Kolochuk. We could easily bring back everyone uh, in our forward group. Top three defensemen are under contract. Petrie wants 5 million. I'm very confident looking into this offseason. All of our goaltenders are signed. I'm actually going to take a bit of a break right now to record. I'm going to go watch the Montreal Canadiens game that's on right now. You guys will see me continue with the contracts in just a few moments. All right, now looking at the contract situation, we're not going to be able to sign all of our UFA, so we're going to have to let a couple go. Probably have to let Jeff Petrie go. Um, I mean, he is a very good defenseman. 85 overall, but he's already 33, so his probably rating so his rating is probably going to go down. We already have some very good defensemen. So we have TJ Brody's in 85, Romanov 85 at 21, Weber at 89. We also have Mitte and Fleury, which will be our bonding pairing. So already we have five defensemen. Could potentially have a 6-1 in Kulak or uh, Kulikov. Just because Jeff Petrie does want quite a lot of money. He wants $5 million for four years until he's 37. I don't think we're willing to risk that contract. So KK here, he wants $6 million, 6 6.4 for one year. So I'm going to see if I can maybe... If, if I put it up a few years, he's going to want more. But now Kukanemi's 89 overall at 20. All right. So let's, so let's say I give him a seven-year, 8.3, six years. So he'd be under contract until he's um, 26. So I'm going to try to give him that contract and try it at 7.5. And I'm very curious to see if he's going to take that. If so... That would be a steal of a contract. Because the way he's going, he's definitely going to be in the 90s. He's 89 at 20 years old. He is our first line center for years to come. I'm going to see if he's going to take that 7.5 for six years. After that, for centers, we have to sign Sam Steele. Uh, I'm going to see if he's going to take four by four. Four million for four years. And if he doesn't, we're just going to give him what he asked for. Dino, we're gonna see if I can give him five years for. Dino, we're gonna see if I can give him five million for three years. So what I'm doing is just cutting back a little bit, just to save that every inch of cash space that I can on these guys. If they say no, well, we're gonna be uh just giving them more. <coughs> if they say no, we're just gonna give them what they want. All right, Gallagher is back with our team. Uh, all the other guys unfortunately have rejected. Uh, Free's back, and there we go. Yes, Petty Kukaniemi with the team for another, I believe it was six years I gave him, $7.5 million. $7.5 million for six years. And that's an unbelievable contract right there. We still have just shy $20 million to work with. I'm going to give Tatar exactly what he wants. I want to keep him on the team. Uh, Jeff Petrie, I think it's time for should we part ways with him. Gonna give Sam Steele exactly what he wants. Uh, Dino and Kovalchuk as well. Hopefully they all come back. 
All right, there we go. Sam Steele is back with the team as well as Ilya Kovalchuk. Uh, Tatar will reject the contract, unfortunately. So we may have to give him a bit more money as well as Dino. All right, so that's a bit rough. All right, going to give Dino 5.75 for three years. And I'm going to give one last offer to Tatar. I'm going to give him 6.250 for three years. Bit more money. If they say no, they'll go free agency. And then we'll be uh, able to probably get them at a cheaper price at that time. All right, so there we go. Philip Danu is back. Tomish Tatar is going to go to free agency as well as Chef Petrie. But the main piece I wanted back was Danu for his uh, face sauce and his defensive ability. 5.750 for three years. Not a bad contract. Only 28. Guys, you see here is defensive stats. 90 face offs. Extremely good. He had 55 points last year, so perfect third or fourth line center for us. All right, I think we're set for free agency. I'm going to let Armia walk as well as Petrie and uh, Tatar. So at this point, they're going to test free agency. And then we have actually 9.1 million of cat space left. So we'll see what's available in free agency. Here we go. So heading into free agency, Taylor Hall there, 9.4 for seven years. is the only elite player there in free agency. Uh, we have Denis Gurianov, 24 years old, 80 overall. So Hall is not the only elite. I'm actually going to try to get Gurianov. He doesn't want a lot of money. I'm wondering what it's going to cost in terms of pick. Maybe two years at 1.5. Uh, third round pick. All right, so let's see if I bump it up. Because we have a lot of cast space. I had Gurianov uh, with my Atlantic Navigators team. And he seemed pretty good. So let's say I give him 1.750. Uh, third round pick. I think it's worth it for two years. Uh, only 24 years old. 80 overall. He could grow. Let's uh, take a chance with Denis Gurianov. Could probably be on our fourth line. See how it goes. All right, so I'm going to try to get Andreas Atenasiu here. Uh, he's a UFA. He is a centerman. Uh, constantly putting up uh, between 50 and 40 points for the past three years. Former 30-goal scorer with the Red Wings. Uh, 26 years old. I'm going to try to give him a one-year contract here. Only 4.4. So I'm going to move that up. Maybe 4.750. There's a couple of other teams interested. Definitely uh, low risk, high reward. Again, we have the cat space to do it. Let's see if he signs. All right. So Ottawa gets a first and a third. For Zaitsev going to the Jets as well as a third. Wow. All right. So Gurianov did accept our offer. It's not a done deal yet. A, a Tennessee U has accepted our offer. There you go. So there's honestly not a lot here available. So I think I'm going to stick with my 79 overalls that are young. I mean, it's not great overall, obviously. But um, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to afford anybody over that. So we already have the young guys available. So I think I'm good to just sim up to the next season. Uh, unfortunately, the Dallas Stars did match our offer to Denis Gurianov. I was expecting that. Uh, first for Brock Nelson and Cal Free. I'm going to say no to that trade. Uh, so it's always good to have extra cap space if there's a trade between the Stars and the Wings. Uh, I don't want to use cap space just to use it. It'll be there for next year. Uh, first and a prospect for Atkinson. Actually, our forwards are looking very good right now. Uh, there's a trade for a defenseman, Alec Martinez. He won a first for the following year's draft. Martinez, 33-82. He's only three overall higher than our young guys in their early 20s. So Jaden Schwartz and Ben Sherrod, former Montreal Canadian to the Hurricanes. And Henrik Lundqvist goes to Columbus along with a first. Wow, Lundqvist trying to get a cup at the end of his career. Going to the Blue Jackets, probably going to be a backup goaltender there. Uh, depending on the situation right now. So we actually have Elvis uh, Merce Lickens right now. So they're offering us Martinez for two seconds now. Three years at 4.6, only 82. Again, I'm not going to say yes to that. All right, there we go. We get a good trade, guys. The Buffalo Sabres are offering us Colin Miller, 28 years old, 82 overall, and a $3.8 million deal for on a $3.8 million deal for one year. That's actually perfect. We have to give up Jonathan Dalin and Zach Stringer. Now, Zach Stringer, he's only 68 overall, medium top six. He's a good prospect, but we definitely needed that extra defenseman. So I think that actually works out. Only one year, 
Thank you very much, Buffalo. That helps us a ton. Colin Miller, welcome to the squad. So Jonas Berdeen is going to Las Vegas with a 6 for 2 seconds from the Devils. All right, guys. Before we go edit the lines, let's take a look at the individual awards for the previous season. Of course, the Anaheim Ducks beat us for the Stanley Cup. The Buffalo Sabres won the President's Trophy. Let's see if we won any individual awards. Yard Ross with Patrick Kane as well as the Hart. James Norris went to Hedman for a second year in a row. The Lady Bing goes to Patrick Kane. Schlappig won the Calder. So he didn't go to Caulfield with 30 plus goals, but Schlappig did lead rookie scoring. Con Smite, John Gibson, of course. He was fantastic for the Ducks against us in the final. Vesna went to Tuka Ras. William Jennings goes to Vasilevsky. Orlov wins the Bill Masterton. Jack Adams to the San Jose coach. The Selkie goes to Ryan O'Reilly. Him and Kopitar are leapfrogging each other each year. Ted Lindsay goes to Matt Barzell. And the Rocket goes to Kane. So Patrick Kane, four individual awards. Great season for him. Let's look at the lines quickly, guys. And oh my god. Yes, Betty Kanyemi is a 90 overall, making 7.5. For the next six years, medium elite. You'll absolutely love to see it. Cole Caulfield up to an 85 overall. Let's see if I move him on the first line. It gets a plus one. Um, let's. I'm going to try a few things. Let's see if I put Domi there. Uh, I'm going to keep Drouin. Drouin has medium top six while Domi has medium top six as well. You know what, guys? I'm going to try this. I'm going to try to put Suzuki in this third line, hoping that he can grow. Uh, it does give everybody on the bottom six a plus one. So that's fantastic. As for defense, Romanov, 86 overall. There you go. I'm going to put in Calfrey. He's now an 80 overall. Awesome. So Mitty's going to be there. Uh, Miller. I wonder if I move Miller down, if it gives a plus to anybody. It does not. So I think I'm going to roll with this. Romanov, Weber, Brody, Miller, Fleury, and Mitte. And Carey Price is still in 87 overall. So complete look at the lines, guys. KK, 90 overall. Gallagher, 85. Drouin, 85. Uh, it's only going to be a matter of time before Caulfield's in the first line. But I'm going to try this with that plus 3. So Caulfield's in 88. Sam Steele is in 87. And Domi is in 90. So we technically have 290 overalls on our two first lines. Kreider, 84. Dino, 84. Suzuki, 81. And then this fourth line is insane. Kovalchuk, 83. Paling, 81. A Tennessee, 85 overall in the fourth line with a plus one. I'm going to try that. With chemistry, Romanov is in 87. Weber, a 90. What an absolute... Beast pairing that is Brody 86, Miller 83, Flurry 80, Mitty 81. You've seen goaltending. This team is absolutely gonna be a force in this uh, in this season. Uh, looking at the power play, uh, I definitely want to put Caulfield on that power play here. So I'm wondering where I can fit him in. Uh, probably here on the second pairing. I'm gonna put Caulfield. Try to get the best chemistry I can get as well. He's a sniper, 85 overall. You know what? First part of playing minutes for Cole Caulfield. There you go. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go KK, Caulfield, Domi, Weber, Drouin, Gallagher, Steele, Kreider, Brody, and Ilya Kovalchuk with a great shot from the point. Dino and the Tennessee. Look at that. Plus three for the penalty kill. Dino and I'm going to put a Tennessee U there to kill penalties in the second unit as well. Primo is up to an 82 overall. There you go. So we're definitely going to have a decision to make. I might bring up Primo to give him some more NHL ice time to back up Carey Price. Now, just before we end off the episode, guys, I'm going to have to take a look as to where Jeff Petrie, Thomas Tatar went. So first of all, Jeff Petrie, he decided to go to the Boston Bruins. Oh my goodness, Jeff Petrie, how can he do that? He still has his half sweater on. Wow, so Jeff Petrie, he's going to be a rival for the Montreal Canadiens. Crazy. I wonder where Tatar went. Imagine if he went to the Bruins as well. He went to the Pittsburgh Penguins. So Tomas Tatar will be playing with Sidney Crosby. There you go. 
One last player, uh, notably that we let go. We did let Armia walk uh, to go to free agency. Take a look where Yoel Armia went. He went to the Edmonton Oilers to play with Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid. So that will do it for the episode. A crazy episode. So that will do it for the episode. Pretty crazy with that high, uh, with those draft picks that we got. A lot of elite potential players. We brought back... KK for seven years at 90 overall. We brought back KK long term at 90 overall on a great contract. We are listed as a contender. I can't wait to get going for a 2021 2022 season. So, guys, if you did enjoy the video, do leave a thumbs up below. I'd appreciate it. Subscribe if you're new and hit that notification bell. A lot of hockey and baseball content is coming every few days, every week, We're bringing the content for you guys in 2020. Thank you for watching, guys, and as always, have a great day.